I've been asked by some of my kind commenters, Sajid, Yatri and Dritti, to do a video on parabolas. Now, this is a topic I must say right at the beginning, it's unlikely that you'll see in the test. It didn't come up in my real test and I've never heard about it coming up in other people's tests, but it is in the syllabus, so potentially it could be tested, particularly in the hard section of the GRE Quant. So if you're one of those students who wants to cover all their bases and make sure they know every topic, this is one of the topics you might have been missing before and this is why I want to do a video on parabolas. This video will be about the main topics in parabolas, which is factorizing, finding the vertex and finding the intercepts, including negative parabolas, and that'll be the last part of this video, the most interesting part. But I would have to do another video to complete the series on transforming parabolas. So if this video generates enough interest, I'll do a follow-up video on transforming parabolas. But if a parabola question does come up, it's more likely the style of question you'll see in this video. So what is a parabola? A parabola is basically, and I'm sure some mathematicians will be butchering me for saying this, a curve or a smiley face. It's an x squared curve, usually x squared, and it looks like the one you can see on the screen. Now at the end of the video, we'll discuss an unhappy parabola, but for now, you can think of a positive x squared parabola as a smiley face. And I'll have an equation, something like the one you can see on the screen, y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. And a classic question you'll be asked is find the vertex. So in this case, the minimum point on that parabola. Or they might ask you, find out where it crosses the x-axis, the x-intercept of the parabola, or find out where it crosses the y-axis. And the diagram they give you won't be as neat as the one you can see on the screen, where you can just easily look up the numbers that you want to find. You'll have to work out for yourself. As I've written down below, the core skill you need to be very good at for solving parabola type questions is factorizing quadratics. So I want to give you a quick overview of how you do that, and then we'll move on to some harder questions. Look at the equation you can see on screen. y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. Do you know how to solve that if we set it equal to 0? What you need to do is to find two numbers that multiply to get the negative 3 at the end, and the add to get the negative 2 in the middle. Two numbers that multiply to get the number, the constant, on its own at the end, and add to get the coefficient in front of the x. Can you think of those two numbers? They would be negative 3 and plus 1. Negative 3 and plus 1 multiply to get negative 3 and add to get minus 2. So we put negative 3 and plus 1 in a pair of brackets together with an x in each bracket as you can see on screen. We have now factorized that quadratic. Now most of you watching this video will already know about factorizing quadratics. If you didn't know, you do need to know. But you're thinking, how does that help us with a parabola? Well, first of all, the two solutions to that quadratic, if we make it equal to zero, notice in the original equation it doesn't equal to zero. If we make it equal to zero and find the two solutions, in this case, positive three and negative one, that gives us the two x-intercepts of the parabola. Notice on the graph to the left, it crosses over the x-axis at 3 and negative 1. So that's the first benefit of factorizing and solving the quadratic for the parabola. You find the x-intercepts very easily, very quickly. But now I'm going to tell you an amazing secret that I bet 99% of you didn't know. Factorizing the quadratic like this gives us the root into finding the vertex, the minimum point or maximum point of the parabola. How so? What you do, because parabolas are symmetrical, is you add up the two x-intercepts and divide by two, and that will give you the x-coordinate of the vertex. Let me say that again. To find that minimum point, like you can see on the graph, or a maximum point, you get the two x-intercepts, in this case three, and negative one, add them up, three plus negative one is two, then divide by two, kind of you're finding the average of the two points, two divided by two is one, and that has given us the x-coordinate of that vertex. It's one, as you can see on the diagram. And of course, if we want to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, all we have to do is get that x-coordinate of one and plug it back into the equation, either into the brackets or into the original equation. 
let's put it back into the original equation. 1 squared minus 2 minus 3, what would that be? Negative 4. And there you can see on the graph that it is indeed negative 4. The coordinate of that minimum point, the vertex, is called is 1, negative 4. Now I've got one more big secret to tell you at the end of the video, but right now that is the main secret of the video. How do you find the vertex of a parabola? You put it equal to 0, you factorize it, you find the two solutions, which are the two x-intercepts, you find the average of those two solutions, that gives you the x-coordinate of the vertex, and then you put that x-coordinate back into the equation to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. Let's do that with a real ETS example, and then we'll get straight to my last secret. For this parabola, find the following. Find the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and the coordinate of the vertex. I want to see if you, my amazing students, can just pause the video and work each of these out just based on the tips I've already given you. If you want to, pause the video and try it yourself, or you can wait to see my explanation. Step one is we're going to put it equal to zero, and we're going to factorize it. So we put it equal to 0. Again, we need two numbers that multiply to get negative 12 and add to get 4. I think those two numbers would be negative 6 and plus 2. Let's see if I'm right. And there we go. Negative 6 plus 2. We've factorized it. And what are the two solutions there? They would be 6 and negative 2. There you go. We've found the two x-intercepts. Let's skip the y-intercept for now. We'll do that in a second. But let's find the coordinates of the vertex. Remember, we've got those two x-intercepts of 6 and negative 2. We find the average by adding them up and then dividing by 2. 6 plus negative 2 is 4. Divide that by 2, it's 2. So that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. How do we find the y-coordinate of the vertex? We put that x-coordinate of 2 back into the equation. Let's put it into the brackets this time. 2 minus 6 is minus 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. Minus 4 times 4 is negative 16. Just to demonstrate, if we put it back into the original equation, we still get the same answer. 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 12 is indeed negative 16 as well. So that's the y-coordinate. The x-coordinate is 2, the y-coordinate is negative 16. That's answer C, the coordinates of the vertex. Just quickly, how do we find the y-intercept? Well, in any y-intercept, the x-coordinate is 0. When a curve or a parabola crosses the y-axis, its x-coordinate is 0. So we put x as 0 back into the original equation to find the y-intercept. That would be, in this case, x squared would be 0, minus 4x would be 0, so you just have negative 12. So the y-intercept would be 0, comma, negative 12. And there we have it. We have the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the coordinates of the vertex using my amazing secret. So a few of you are now impatiently going, well, what's your other secret? So let's cover this final difficult example. We have an unhappy parabola. And here is the question. And it's difficult, very difficult, unless you know a further tip. But you can try it on your own if you like. The question is, which of the following describes the vertex of the parabola with the equation y equals negative x squared plus x plus 20? And those are your five options. Pause the video, have a go or wait to see my explanation. The first step is as normal. We set the equation equal to zero. Now we're gonna deal with the maximum minimum bit at the end, but for now we're just gonna try solving that equation. So we have negative x squared plus x plus 20 equals zero. What's my first tip? The first tip is that we times everything by minus one to change the signs. This is much easier than trying to factorize with a negative in front of the x squared. So we times everything by minus 1 to change the signs. Then we carry on by solving that quadratic as normal. Two numbers that times together to get minus 20 and add together to get minus 1. That would be minus 5 and plus 4, I believe. So x minus 5, x plus 4. The two solutions are 5 and minus 4. 5 and minus 4 are the two x-coordinates of the solutions. So if that was the question, those would be the two x-intercepts. But how do we find the vertex? We find the average of those two. So we add up 5 plus minus 4, that's 1. Divide that by 2, that's a half, or 0.5. So that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. So we already know the answer is either going to be A, B, or E, 
because the x coordinate has to be 0.5. How do we find the y coordinate? We find the y coordinate by putting 0.5 back into the equation. If you put 0.5 in as x into either equation, but the second one is a bit easier, you end up with 0.5 squared minus 0.5 minus 20, which gives us 20.25. So the coordinates are 0.5, 20.25. Now, yes, that does tell us the answer is B. So you're thinking, what's the second trick? But how would we have known? Imagine if there was another answer choice, which had 0.5, 20.25 as a minimum. Say that was E. How would we have known whether it was a maximum or minimum? This comes back to the unhappy bit in the title. If there's a negative in front of the x squared, the graph looks unhappy and we have a maximum vertex. That's why the answer is B. It's a maximum at 0.5, 20.25. This is a graph of this parabola. So if we have a negative in front of the x squared, it's an unhappy parabola with a maximum. If we have a positive x squared, like the previous example at the beginning, we have a happy parabola with a minimum as the vertex. And that completes this video on the main tricks you need to know for graphing parabolas, finding maximum and minimums in the vertex, and finding the y and x intercepts. Less commonly asked is how to transform a parabola and that will have to wait for another video. But I really hoped you learned at least something from this video on parabolas, covering the main topics that you'll see if it comes up on the test. See you in the next video.